Thanks for tuning in to Raising Bosses. I'm your host, Shauna J. Ray. Here on this podcast, we discuss changing our mindsets, growing a business while raising a family. If that's what you're interested in or currently doing, please stay tuned for what we have ahead. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. It's Shauna J. Ray back with another solo episode for you guys. Today I wanted to talk about something that correlates with uh, things that I get asked a lot and that is basically how I spread my YouTube platform information and all my social medias, how I gather audience on my social media. So I wanted to just kind of go over one way that I have used in set, setting up my social media. And that is through Facebook groups. Now, I'm not talking about myself making one. I am talking about utilizing the ones that are already there. Okay? So, nine times out of ten, if you have a Facebook, you probably are part of one or more Facebook groups on something. So, I wanted to just go on and explain to you guys how I actually use Facebook groups to spread the word of what I have um, on my, mainly for my YouTube, but it does trickle down into my other social medias in various ways. I'm not going to go too in-depth on that because once I explain what I'm going to explain right now, you will see how it correlates to the other social media accounts. Okay, guys? All right. So, now if you're not a part of a, if you're not a part of a Facebook group, but you are trying to spread a message on, I want to, I'm, I'm probably going to just stick to talking about YouTube uh, because this is more pertaining to how I use YouTube to grow my, I'm sorry, how I use Facebook groups to grow my YouTube channel. Um, I was recently asked this question and I've been asked this question lots of times and I've tried to explain it, but there's like a little bit, um, it, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth for you guys so you can really understand and make sure you guys are following me on all social medias uh, raising bosses on Instagram and Facebook and as well as my personal Sean J Ray on all social media platforms so first I want to start by saying whatever you are into on YouTube find a, a Facebook group for it so in in other words I love natural hair I like figuring out new ways to do me and my girl's hair. I like learning new things. I like, you know, showing off my styles in general. So say that your niche, whatever your niches are, because usually there's more than one, but we're going to stay to, I'm talking about my natural hair. So I have joined probably around 30 groups for natural hair. To be honest with you guys, it might even be more. And you don't have to go overboard like I did, but if you want to know how I spread the word, then this is how I this is how I do it. It's a lot at first to take in, but you'll see it's very easy in the long run. Once you get everything started up, you will see what I'm talking about. So when you start joining these groups, join these groups under your personal account on your Facebook profile, and whatever, like I said, whatever your niche or niches are. And be active in the groups. Don't just only post your YouTube stuff or whatever, but be active in the groups in various ways. Comment on things. Um, I'm not as active. I mean, I am a part of like literally probably like 200 groups total. Um, but I do try to, you know, when they pop up, I do try to comment on things and, and, and submit things that are just are more than just my YouTube. But that is the first start, is you're going to join groups for your niches. And let me tell you something, guys. There is a Facebook group for everything. You name it, and you can't name it, and it's a Facebook group. Just saying. So even if you think it's not a Facebook group for it, just type in a few keywords and see what you come up with. It might lead you to somewhere else, or you might figure it out in a different way. But that's fine, too. Now... Like I said, when you begin to be active on these groups, you will find people are going to start, uh, you know, coming to your personal page and wanting to be your friend and things like that. Now, 
that's neither here nor there if you want to, you know, add them because you know a lot of people are kind of like iffy about that. But I'll tell you in the I'll tell you in the long run, um, if you do decide to add those people, how they'll help you later on. Now, also when it comes to learning anything, join a Facebook group for it. So if you want to learn something there is a Facebook group out there to teach you. I promise you, and there is nothing like a Facebook group. You cannot Google some of, some of the things you will learn in a Facebook group. Because the difference between Googling a question, finding a blog post about it, finding a YouTube video about it, is that sometimes those things either, the like personalized aspect gets kind of lost. So I remember when I joined a group for you to uh, for embroidery. Uh, I bought a new embroidery, not embroidery machine. My mom had gifted me a new serger, and I was having problems with it, and I could not find a YouTube video to help me. Nothing was in the manual. I don't know if I wasn't looking. I couldn't go to class just yet. It was just like it was terrible. So one day I stumbled upon a group specifically for my uh, sewing machine. And lo and behold, one day somebody asked the question of how to fix something that I didn't even realize I didn't know what I was doing. And it actually ended up helping me. They, uh, a lot of the groups, because other people are asking these questions, other people are answering these questions, they don't always make YouTube videos or blog posts about them, but they are free to ask these questions and answer them in these groups. So that personal aspect of it is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. You will learn so much. So if it's about natural hair, there you go. And you're learning about the natural hair. Maybe you're uh, wanting to start a natural hair or makeup YouTube channel or some videos on it. But you don't know how to do either of those things. Learn it on those groups and go, hey, guys, I learned this on a Facebook group. I saw this. I was inspired. And then I'm going to try it. Don't bash, please. Or whatever. You know, you don't even have to say that. But you know what I'm getting at here. So learn. You can learn just about anything when it comes to Facebook groups. Now, when it comes to actually posting within these groups, always offer relevant content. Please and thank you guys. Sometimes I, you know, don't always do this, but when I say relevant, I mean like sometimes people are wanting to spam the, the, the groups with random stuff, and there are these um, admins in the groups. They don't allow that. Some groups are kind of more free fall, but a lot of times the admins do not like that. So you want to be very careful. So when you go to post, I don't care what you're posting, but be very careful. If you're posting something that might relay back to your Instagram page or something that might promote you in some way, sometimes they don't like that. Sometimes they don't mind as long as the information is relevant, and sometimes they don't want it at all. Sometimes you can uh, reach out to the admin of the group and say, hey, I have some relevant content for this group. I would like to post it. It is promoting, you know, my YouTube channel or whatever it is, but this is strictly, you know, it's going to get the, the page value regardless. A lot of them will oblige. Um, you can also read the, they'll have rules posted above. Um, when you join a group, there will always be rules posted for you to actually look at and say, hmm, okay, it says right there, no YouTube videos whatsoever, or it'll say, you know, it won't say, or you can kind of gauge by looking at the group if other people are posting up their YouTube videos and, you know, it's getting play, then do that. Now, 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 when it comes to you built up yourself in these groups, now, it's not like I'm saying you have to, you know, every day be on these groups, plugging, 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 just like I said, you know, a couple of comments, maybe you post something strictly you know, like if it's about natural hair, just post your hair of the day type of situation. Don't go too much into it. Personal page, don't, you know, whatever. So now we're going to take it a step further. I always suggest to everyone that has a YouTube channel to get a Facebook page. I suggest to everyone, I always suggest to all social media accounts, if you are trying to be a serious blogger or YouTuber, I always tell people, always have a Twitter, an Instagram, and a Facebook. And when, it talk, when I talk about Facebook, I mean, not necessarily the personal page, but I think you have to have a personal page to have a business page. Um, I'm sorry, not a business page, like a fan page, I think they call it. To have a fan page, 
<clears throat> but you will create uh, what I think is still called a fan page. It's like it can be like a personal page, but you're not following anyone. You are being followed by everyone. Uh, much like when you see like the celebrity, you can anyone can get one of those pages and you build it up. So why do I say you should have? Uh, sorry, a Facebook page. Well, one one thing is, I don't care how old you are, Facebook is still relevant. Things still go viral on Facebook. Things come from Twitter and Instagram and go viral on Facebook and YouTube. Um, so why wouldn't you want a piece of that? Why wouldn't you want your stuff on a platform that will only help you reach more people? Okay, so I hate when people say, oh, Facebook is for old people. Facebook was originally for college students. So everyone and their mama is on there right now. So that means that it's for everyone at this point. So again, you're reaching more audience. Regardless to whether you're a 17-year-old makeup guru, there is a 17-year-old makeup fanatic on YouTube, on Facebook. And you can reach them through these groups because they are trying to do the same thing you're trying to do. Learn teach and grow. So now, now that you made a Facebook page, a Facebook po uh, fan page, what is the persona behind what you're doing with this page? So let me explain to you what I mean by that. So my page is an extension of what would be my Instagram. Um, I don't, you know, I don't do anything that's too controversial on my profile, on my Facebook. And I keep it strictly for positive things, inspirational things, my YouTube things, my Instagram things, you know, day in the life type of situations. And like I said, it's an extension of my Instagram, which I also share my videos on. So when I first started doing this, I would just share, I would copy and paste the, uh, the link for the actual video on that page. And then, you know, I'd say a little blurb about it, like, oh, you know, whatever, whatever, follow me, whatever, whatever, click the link. And I got a little bit of play from that. But the problem with that is that all people get to see is your thumbnail when you do that. All that generates is your thumbnail. Now, if you have a great clickbait thumbnail, that's awesome. You'll probably still get a lot of play. However, the thing about a lot of platforms nowadays, when you scroll, Everybody stops when they see the video playing, so you can kind of see what's going on, right? So no, I'm not saying you need to upload your whole video to Facebook or some kind of, you know, craziness like that. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying that you're giving yourself better opportunities to go viral or your video to get more play, literally play, and, you know, it's just, I'm going to show you how to get more than just click. So now I noticed that, again, like I just said, I noticed that people were scrolling or when I would scroll, I would see, you know, that would catch my attention is when the video was playing. Now, usually when people are trying to promote a YouTube video, they make what they call like a teaser or a trailer, um, you know, a little one minute video because a lot of these platforms can only sustain a one minute video. Yes, Facebook can sustain more than one minute. However, if you're trying to cross, uh, you know, put it on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that, you're going to want to just do a minute video. I always suggest just a minute teaser. It sometimes is hard to condense into a minute, but just get those things that catch people's eye. So I'll just, I'll briefly explain to you how I make my teasers. Once I have made my full video and I have downloaded the full copy, I do not delete it from my editing software. So now we have what was, you know, you edited in, you edited in, uh, I edited in for Final Cut Pro. So if you've edited any videos before, once you upload it, that chunk, chunk, chunk edited video of clips and stuff like that of your videos is still left in there in the order that you put it in. So since I'm trying to make a trailer or a teaser video, all I'm going to do is further condense and cut that down. So instead of the whole long thing of me braiding my hair, I'm just going to put a little uh, two-second clip it of, okay, I put this tie on, now I clamped it, now I braided it, and now cut, cut, cut. Now we've cut a 13-minute video down to one minute. 
and it's made a teaser, maybe something clips in there, things to get people's attention. So when they're scrolling and they see the video, they go, ooh, what's this? So now you made this video. You're not going to just post the video and spam accounts. You're not going to do that. That's not what we do. That's not going to help you. What you're going to do is make the video and you're going to upload it to your profile. No, I'm sorry, not your profile, your fan page, your Facebook fan page. And I suggest you do this on your Instagram. I'm not really familiar if Twitter has those type of videos. I actually don't upload my videos on Twitter like that. I should probably start now that I'm thinking about it. I will start doing that. Um, and I'll probably come out with another episode for you guys about that, how that goes. So now that we've uploaded the video to our Facebook profile, you can actually do this uh, from your Instagram so that it's one time. If you have your uh, Instagram set to a business account, you can actually link it to your Facebook fan page. It will ask you to do this when you set up a business account on Instagram. And you will be able to upload straight from your Instagram to your Facebook. A lot of people suggest that you do it straight from Facebook. Uh, depending on what I'm trying to do, I will do both. Um, but we, like I said, we're going to stick to the Facebook thing. So you upload it to Facebook and you upload this video to Facebook and you put a little blurb in there on your Facebook page. Put a little blurb. Say, you know, I did my hair like this today and I'm curious about it looks like. Maybe it was a fail. Maybe it was a good one. Whatever your video is about, put a little blurb in there. I like something that draws attention when I say a bit. And then I tell people where to find the full length video. You can find the full length video at the, at the link below. And in your blurb, make sure you put the link. So now that you've uploaded, you've posted this to your Facebook, pro, uh, your Facebook fan page. Now it's up there for the world to see, right? But is anyone following your Facebook page? Yes, invite your family and friends from your personal from your personal profile so they can see what's going on, so they can be uh, notified as well. And that's only going to help your following. So how do we get our audience to actually see what I just posted? So, well, first, I always tell people, I don't care if you think you're going to double, like, you know, get people to double see it. But some people aren't following your, your person, aren't going to follow your but they don't mind seeing what's going on in there. So I always suggest first you start making sure you're always posting a majority of your video uploads to your personal page. It's very easy. You just hit share and you hit share to timeline and that will share to your personal profile. That way, whoever's not uh, already on your fan page will either do one of two things, click the link and view your video or they will also join your Facebook fan page. That way you get views, and when you post the next thing, you've got you know a couple more followers on there. Now the same thing applies for your groups. You're going to do the exact same thing. However, we're going to do it a little bit differently. And Facebook has uh, a few months ago. Facebook actually changed it because before you used to actually have to. Uh, Choose one by one, at least on the phone, you had to choose one by one what group you wanted to put it in. So you'd have to keep posting and posting and posting it. Finally, they made the decision to make it one click and share. So what you're going to do is you're going to click that share button again, and there's an option to share to groups. This works on the phone and on the uh, computer as well. And when you share to groups, it's going to be a list of groups that you follow that pops up. And by those list of groups, it's going to say share or post or something like that. So at the very top, you're going to be able to put a blurb in your personal profile. Because your personal profile is the one following the group. So what you're going to do is you're just going to put a blurb that you wouldn't mind all the groups seeing. So let's say... It's about hair. So you're like, like I said earlier, you made this video about braiding your hair and you're posting about it and you're like, hey guys, da 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 da. What I like to do because sometimes it, it's very salesy, uh, for the lack of a better word. If you're like, hey, check out my video, don't do that, guys. Do not tell people that. Make it sound like you are sharing from 
someone else's Facebook, okay? That is the best thing. So then it looks like you are all about sharing good content for people to see, not to promote yourself. And I think that's what gets me by on a lot of the groups that I'm in because sometimes a lot of groups, they are like, especially the hair groups, they're big on them because everybody's a natural hair guru right nowadays, right? So they, a lot of them don't like YouTube video shares. A lot of them don't, but I get by because not that they think it's a different person I'm sharing, it's the fact that I have relevant content and I'm solely sharing it for them to see my relevant content that they will also enjoy. Now I'm going to get new eyeballs, right? Okay, so now I've got new eyeballs. I've shared into this group. I've put my blurb. I've made it sound like if you were someone watching your video and you enjoyed your video, put that blurb. Oh my gosh, guys, look at this video. It's amazing. Da, da, da. She did this. Da, da, da. Obviously, you would, you know, say it like it's, you know, like I said, don't make it sound like it's actually not you when it is. But make that excitement. Don't just say, hey, check out my new video. Check out my new blog. Don't do that. So now when you post it into these groups, there is a wait time for some of the groups. Some of the groups have to have an admin actually look it over and approve. So sometimes it takes a minute. Um, otherwise, what is going to happen, I actually had this happen to me recently, guys. I actually have this group, um, had another video, um, was it a, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't a video, it was a picture. I had another picture go semi, I would call it semi-viral. It didn't really like go viral like crazy viral. But I got over a hundred new followers to my page, okay, from a picture. And now that means I have more, I'm having more engagement on my profile, on my fan page now because I have dozens of new eyes. So I did the exact same thing, guys. I posted a picture on my page, I shared it, I put a blurb, and since it was a picture, and it was a cute picture of me and my girls, each of us are great. Hair. Um, I'm braiding my oldest because she's braiding her sister's hair, helping me with it. And it was a cute photo. So when I shared it, I just talked about my experience of how difficult you know, it is or whatever and just shared with them and people loved it. So I got lots of people liking the picture. Now let me explain an amazing feature that Facebook added. And this is how I got people. Yes, people will look at your page and say no join, pick up more ads and stuff, things like that. But that doesn't always happen, especially on Facebook pages, because Facebook pages are like Instagram pages. They're not followed like that. You know what I'm saying? You'll see what I mean if you get and when you start digging deeper into these Facebook um, profiles and things like that. So there's a feature that when someone comes onto your page and likes your picture or likes anything on your page, what's gonna happen is Facebook will first alert you and say, hey, so-and-so doesn't follow your page. Invite them now. But you don't have to wait for that. As soon as you see new people liking your page or liking your, your pictures or whatever, your posts on your profile, on your fan page, if you click on there, there is going to be a, uh, a list of likes will pop up, just like it does when you on regular your Facebook page. But next to each person's name, it's going to say one of uh, several things. It's going to say liked, invited, or invite. So obviously the people that already like your page, it's going to say that they liked it. People that you have previously invited, it's going to say they've been invited. Maybe they're just following your page. And then you're going to have a blue button that says invite. So when a dozen people came and liked that picture, I hit invite to those dozen people. Five of them I have uh, accepted. And that was five new people on my page, and I did that dozens of times. So we got to utilize these amazing features on Facebook because I thought that was really, really cool. Um, I remember when I first saw it, and I was eating that up because I was like, "That's awesome!" Because, like I said, a lot of people don't just jump to the, the like button on your page, and you really want to get that up. If you're a blogger on YouTube, and you know anything about like when you want to become serious and start getting campaigns and doing things for money. They like to see a good following on your platform. If you have a good following on all your platforms, or, as you know, Facebook could be one of those platforms that you're really good at, and that gets your following count. And so when you share into these groups, I always stress to everybody 
do everything that will get you more eyeballs on your content. That is the problem with a lot of people. They post it and they throw it out there and they walk away. You cannot do that if you're serious and you're trying to grow. You cannot just post one time and, and walk away from it and just post it on one thing. Post it across everything, get it in everyone's face. Show them, hey, hey, it's over here. Did you see this video? And also, don't just post one time. If you follow anybody on Instagram or Facebook and they have any type of content that they make money from or any type of content that, you know, helps them grow in any form, they are constantly reposting stuff. So maybe they did a hairstyle a couple of months ago and they're saying that they want to revisit their hairstyle or, hey guys, I was thinking about doing it a different way. Would you like to see a new video on that? But they've reposted the content from a month, from months before. So you have to make sure you're constantly getting in people's faces. And another thing that people don't realize on Instagram and Facebook, not everybody following you is going to see every post. And I don't mean that in an algorithm way. I mean that in a, they have things going on. By the time they come to their Facebook or their Instagram, your post might be too far away and they're not checking your page every day. So keep that in mind, guys. That's why I always tell people to constantly keep reposting things. Because you post a hairstyle one week, half your following didn't see it. They didn't see it. They were at work that time when you posted it. When they came back to their page, that post was too far away for them to see it again. Maybe it got clouded by all the other people that they're following. You have to remember those things and make sure you keep it in mind instead of getting bored in and wondering why you're not growing. Now, I'm not sitting here saying that I have hundreds of thousands of people following me, but this is some things that have worked for me. These are things that have grown my, Insta my YouTube channel quickly. These are things that grew in my Instagram and my Facebook profile, my Facebook fan page. So I want to just share tips that have helped me grow. And it might not be the end all be all. You might be one of those people that just go viral one time, that's all you need. But would it hurt to make more money off my hands going viral? Just saying, just throwing that part out there. I have a friend and for Halloween she posted a picture of her and her boyfriend. They were the cutest thing. They were cooking on this room. She was cooking. And she posted it on Twitter. I don't think she has a Facebook. Um, and she posted it on Instagram. Well it went viral on Twitter. But then it went viral on and it reached the same place. So now, that should tell you something right there. I don't know if she has a Facebook again, but the post that went viral was from the Twitter. It was a clip from the Twitter page. You know, y'all all see those, those Twitter um, clips go viral and they end up on Facebook. So what I'm telling you is, get as many eyeballs out there as you can. She wasn't trying to go viral, but she did go viral with that picture. And it shows you that even though she didn't have that extra added step, it still ended up on there anyway. So imagine that she put it on all three, how viral it would have been. Because then you would have had people posting it from Twitter to Instagram and Facebook, from Instagram to Twitter and Facebook, and from Facebook to Instagram and Twitter. If you understand where I'm going with that web, if you understand where I went with that web, because it doesn't just go from Twitter to Instagram and Facebook, it goes all around. People are on one platform sharing and it just keeps going in circles. So I always tell people, get as many eyes as you can, and that's the idea behind this. So not only did you grow your Facebook fan page, but next time you post another video, another picture, you're gonna get more engagement on that, and you're gonna already have more eyeballs on your next video. And I can't stress enough to you guys to make sure you are posting these videos like this. If it is, I'm not saying do all your vlogs like that, now, if it's an, a significant vlog, if you're one of those vloggers that vlog all the time and it's a significant vlog, or, you know, maybe you don't need a whole mini clip of your vlog life. Maybe you just need, like, 30-second clips, 15-second clips in the video. Hey, guys, this is a free blurb from the video. You don't need to go all out. But if you're doing, like, tutorials or learning, you know, any teaching people stuff, do a little clip. Make sure there's funny parts in it, too. Have fun with YouTube. Have fun posting content. All things don't have to be super perfect. If you're messing up on your YouTube video, if you ever watch any of my YouTube videos, which I'm trying to get on YouTube, my videos, I make sure I try to add something funny to each and every one of them. I try to make sure that if I'm messing up on camera, I cut that 
dedicated to the end, to the beginning. You know, make a little funny blur. Don't be afraid to stutter and stammer and all that other stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. Everyone does it. There's not one actual perfect, perfect person out there. So why do you think you have to be perfect? Just remember that. So if you are doing a tutorial and you're stammering your words and you're messing up your hair and whatever else, put that in there. Make that a part of the trailer. That's something that's going to get people to laugh and go, I gotta see this. Think about the kind of videos that go viral. The videos that are like really corny or like videos that are like people that have epic fails. Because in life, we all have those fails. All of us. Have y'all seen that, that uh, meme with the girl and she goes to cut her bangs and her bangs come out so bad they just stick straight up? And my sister posted that and I was like, I've never had that happen. I used to cut my own bangs. Well, she posted it because it resonated with her. She said, well, it happened to me. And that hit me because it's like, not that I don't, you know, I'm afraid to share my fails. The fact that a lot of people are afraid to share their fails, but don't realize that's the type of stuff that gets you an audience. That's the type of stuff that makes people feel like you're human. I have people that I follow on Instagram, and I don't know if they're subconscious. I don't know if it's a combination of trying to be perfect on camera, but you never see them falter, you never see them messy hair and sweatpants, not saying you have to post that messy hair and sweatpants, just saying that I want to know you're human, and it's okay to be human, because hopefully we all are, I don't know if it's Area 51 thing right now, if anybody on Facebook, but anyway, yeah, like, don't be afraid to post those things, and don't be afraid to talk about those things. So in the picture that I posted recently that went kind of viral, I had I think like 30,000 people actually like look at it, look at it or something like that. Dozens of people shared it. It was not viral for me. But I talked about how I struggle with my own hair. I have two beautiful kids with lots and lots of thick natural hair. And my oldest, I've been doing my hair for 10 years, and you know, it's work, but it's worth it because her hair is so healthy and long. But now my three-year-old, about to be four-year-old, is also getting long, thick hair. And it's a lot for me right now because I have long, thick hair. I also have my husband's locks that I keep up with. So I'm doing a lot. And I, I grew my own dog, too. So I have a lot of hair to keep up with, guys. Just throwing that out there, showing you that's what I talked about. I talked about how it wasn't easy. I also talked about how I'm trying to teach my, my 10-year-old, who is actually very um, inept at learning, I'm teaching her, so I took the opportunity of being older when I'm just doing their hair as an opportunity to teach her and help her learn some things. And I posted that and explained my falters, my faults, and, you know, how I, you know, worked with that. And people like to see that I was human. They like to see that, you know, and I asked people, has anybody else been doing this? Because why did I wait two years? Actually, you know, she took And it doesn't really become anything until about three. So she's only had hair for about a year. Well, all this whole time, my, my, my oldest has been interested. I, I've been meaning to do it, actually. And when I asked that question, quite a few people have either done it, were a part of it as a child, or said, hey, oh my God, next year when my daughter, my youngest, is, you know, up for doing hair, my six-year-old can start, you know, helping mommy comb her. That's great. So I've shared something that other people weren't doing that they thought was a great idea. So these are just the type of content, the type of things I'm talking about with content you have to understand that it's good to share. Because I could have just gone about the day, done their hair, and then posted the after effect of their hair done and perfect. And, you know, oh, I taught my oldest how to do this while I was doing her hair and I was over there. It's not the same. But when I post it in the moment, it's not saying that every moment is going to happen, but when you get into that mindset of, wait a minute, this is really cute, and no one was around the table for myself, I figured out myself. But I did, and it came out perfect. So, well, it came out well, you know, but, but perfect for me. So, take those opportunities. Make sure you look human. People, I always tell everybody, because everybody, everybody I ask, they say they want to all these things, 
and then you ask them, you go, but what do people judge me? People judge everybody. Everything is judged. Like, I don't understand. It's nothing to, you know, falter on your money for. Like, you don't go to work. Don't you go to work every day? People are judging you there. Why don't you, why do you care that people judge you other places? And then they go, well, you know, I'm not perfect and I'm not interesting and I'm not like so and so. Then you shouldn't be comparing yourself because not everybody likes to watch so and so. Not everybody likes to watch the opposite of so and so. But there are people watching these people, right? There are people looking at their pages, there are people reading their blogs. And then I say, you're not perfect, but who is? And I said, at the end of the day, certain things we're not going to be perfect on. We do not want to blast all over the internet. So, Sometimes you wear foundation because, you know, you have a breakout. That's fine. Maybe you even, you know, do a little face tuning to have your blemishes away. That's fine. That's not what I'm talking about. But you shouldn't use that as an excuse to not promote your content. It's like, oh, I have a blemish, so I can't, you know, take a picture. There's face tuning. There is makeup. There's angles. Like, there's ways to get around little things like that. Oh, but my voice and oh, I look funny on camera and I'm nervous. And get behind the camera. The camera's the only person not judging you. It's the only thing not judging you and you're afraid of it. The camera doesn't judge you. You judge yourself on the camera. Is that, you see how that works? So when you realize that, I always tell people, get in front of the camera regardless of how people do it. Once you start getting comfortable with being behind the camera, you'll be like, oh, I actually like this picture. Or you'll find something that you don't like about the picture and you can change it. Edit out the background if you didn't like that trash can. Edit out the blemish. Okay, it's fine. Everyone does it. It's okay. It does make the pictures look pretty. And that's fine. You can even do a side by side Instagram versus reality. That also good. But don't just not do it. But yeah, so you're going to be sharing these things and being real with people. And they're going to absolutely love it. They're going to find value in what you post. And make sure when you're using your Facebook feed page. Good. <laughs> when you're doing your Facebook fan page, make sure that it's clean and tidy. And what I mean by that, not saying it has to be perfect like an Instagram blog post, I am saying that make sure it's definitive to what you're trying to accomplish. So it shouldn't be everything, but it also shouldn't be only the perfect stuff. But no. Show us true life. Show us, you know, whatever. Show us a picture of that. Show us a, a live of that. But make sure it's clean. Make sure it's not just like, oh, guys, I had a wild night out last night, blah, and just craziness. But maybe a picture from that night that resonates and then talk about it. Does that make sense? So make sure it looks good. So people want to follow it. People want to know what's what she going to do next. What's happening next? Okay? And post. Always worry about getting eyeballs on your content. I cannot stress that enough. And I've already stressed enough to you guys that make your content engaging. So I was talking to somebody about this the other day. So if you're serious about being an influencer, a blogger, a YouTuber, whatever it is that you're trying to get into on social media, make sure that your stuff is engaging. This is something that I've been learning how to do. Now, if you follow any YouTubers, like we, we keep talking about natural hair, but replace when I say natural hair with whatever your niche is. So whatever bloggers that I watch, they're always like, they'll say stuff like, oh, I just did my hair like this, guys. Do you want to see a video on it? And, like, my thought process was always like, why is she asking this dumb question? Obviously, we follow you to see your videos. Like, what you mean? And then I realized, like, the next day they would come out and be like, oh, the video's posted, guys. And then I realized what they were doing. They were getting engagement. They wanted to know, well, who wants to see what I have to offer? Because... Just because we follow her to see her hair post, maybe we don't care about her hair straight. Maybe we really don't want to see that. Or maybe we do want to see it and she just wants engagement on that photo, on that video, on whatever it is. And that's a way to get engagement on it. So um, 
Facebook is a little bit different from Instagram, but I think it's basically the same thing. Engagement is engagement across all social media. And that's what people look at is what are people talking about? What are people liking on your page? So in order to get engagement, there's there are hundreds of ways to get engagement. One is being real, like I said, being real is big. When you're real with people, they're like, oh, we like her. She's human like us, and she's teaching us something too. So back to the picture of me and my girls, like I told you guys before. I said to everybody, well, who's been doing this? I've never, you know, I've actually seen the, the, the I've seen the little drawing pictures, but I've never actually seen a person do it. And I, you know, asked the question, like, somebody else tell me who's been doing this. Are y'all going to start doing this? And that opens up the floor for banter. Now it opens up the floor for people to like it and say, hey, my mom did that with me too. Hey, I'm about to do that with my daughter. So that opens the floor for engagement. So think about ways that you can ask questions or ask for help. Ask your audience for help on things. Oh, guys, I just did my hair like this, but, you know, I didn't really like the product I used. So, does anybody have suggestions? Maybe you have things lined up in the counter right now for the next time you do that hairstyle. But you want to know what they think. You might actually learn something. I know I have. Those are the type of questions that we want to do. We want to ask for help. We want to ask and see what they've got going on in their lives. How's your audience? Do you ever ask how your audience is doing? They always want to know about you, but why, do you, why don't you ask about them? Get that engagement. You learn about your audience, you learn what they like. So you ask them, well, what do you want to see? And they say, we want to see you do this, this, and that. And then you go, well, now I didn't have content last week, but now I have content this week because I know I'm listening to my audience. And my audience is a bunch of 25-year-old moms that are also trying to braid all their daughter's hair and listen to this. They figured it out now because of my video, my picture, whatever. So those are the things you want to have to take away from this podcast. Um, it's running a little long, guys, but you know, I always have really in-depth things to tell you guys, things that have helped me, and things that help everybody, especially you starting out. I always stress to people, if you already have high engagement, high big audience, whatever it is, these things do nothing but help you. Throwing your stuff into uh, Facebook groups, i honestly explain to you how I learned about doing this. Nobody has yet to talk about this on YouTube or on anything that I've watched or looked at. And I do a lot of research on these things. And it's a lot of superficial information. It's always like, be consistent. Make sure you're posting this. And like, you know, there's a few people out there that have said stuff that I haven't heard from other people. But this particular content, I have never heard anybody talk about that. I've seen it work. So originally I was on some sewing groups and there was a girl there. She you know, I don't, I don't know what her following was on Instagram yet, but I remember when I first started following her on YouTube, I think she was at, I want to say 900. And at the time, I was a little bit below her, and I was like, wow, that's awesome. But I noticed what she was doing. She was sharing her, uh, I forgot to mention, but this is another way to get your videos out there as well. When people would post in the sewing groups, she was a seamstress, like went to school for and people would ask me questions. Well, I have a video on that, guys. And she would post it in the comment section. She would post the link in the comment section because you can't post the videos there. But she would post the link and then you populate the, the actual thumbnail for the video. So, you know, they're asking on how to sew a button on. Hey, I got a video on how to sew that button on, guys. Since you were asking, this might help. It's relevant content. Admins rarely, the comment section, rarely care about that because it's relevant information and not just posting the post. So she would do that and I was like, oh, that's amazing. So that's where I first got the idea to start posting in these groups. Um, I don't think I was posting directly in these groups yet. And I started seeing other people posting in them. So within a couple of months, I think it was about two months, she was at like 2,000 or 4,000. It was like she had tripled her followers, her subscribers on YouTube. And I watched her. I think now she's probably at like 20,000 or something ridiculous. I don't remember. But she's up there now. Because she is in a niche that people are always grabbing for. You know, it's one of those things they're always learning. She does really high-end stuff. So people, you know, they clamor for that. And I just noticed that 
So I started doing it. And I've never heard of anybody doing that. Now, the video thing, the way I learned the video thing was there was another YouTuber that I followed. She is in the wigs category. She does a lot of wigs and some vlogs. But she does a lot of um, tutorials on wigs. And I was following her in a group, I don't, uh, like a natural hair group or whatever, and she would post her little teaser videos. And when I first started following her, I think she was at like 10,000 followers or whatever, subscribers on YouTube. Now she just hit 100,000 recently. And it's only been maybe a year since I was following, maybe two years. But she was consistently posting like that, just like I told you guys from her page. Sometimes she would post from directly from personal page so she was get, gathering her audience and it worked out for her um, again she's in more of like a stricter niche so you know it's kind of diff different when you have one I'm not a consistent two I do a lot of different things so I'm getting people from every direction so what happens is sometimes um, people follow me for natural hair but not for reasons and vice versa and all of those things so you know not saying that that's bad just saying it's a little slow sometimes it's a little slow to grow that way so if you're if you have a niche like that that's more sh you know narrow then you're probably going to have that kind of growth but you have to be posting good content with it that is when good content comes in because i see people doing the same exact thing that like their videos are dark and and it's not about having the best equipment I'm talking about you can record on your phone. Me and my sister did. My sister is, my sister is probably about to hit 100,000 uh, Instagram, uh, sorry, subscribers on YouTube. She's up there, and we started on her phone. Yes, she had a bigger following already, but what I'm saying is the quality of the content comes from the actual content, not always from what kind of fancy, you know, editing software you have or what kind of lenses you use. That's not where it comes from. If you look back on the YouTubers that are famous now, they all started on webcams. I know my my first YouTube channel, I started on my webcam as well. And crappy quality, crappy quality, oh my goodness, it was terrible. I was in a dark room and people watch. I had a light in my face, people watch. And we're talking about like six years ago. People watched me. And all my family was excited because everybody was like, you need a YouTube channel. And I try to start that back up, couldn't change my name, but you get where I'm going with this. And if you look back at everyone else, they built their content up. And I know that nowadays there's more people out there with great um, cameras and stuff like that. But the thing is that if you really look into their stuff, they still started on their phones or their crappy little camera. And you mustn't be scared to start because you don't have the equipment. Now, it's the quality of your content. So you could literally be on your webcam, these crappy webcams. People will still watch you because I know my live get watched. It's the same thing. And you literally could just be giving them good content. Um, one day I decided I wanted to start adding lives to my YouTube channel. And, you know, I mean, like adding them as in having something to actually talk about because there were some videos that I wanted to do and I realized. Something was too broad about me making like a recorded video. So I said, well, if I can talk to people, it would make for a better video because it's something that they can discuss with me. It's something that like I can get my point across and I have to worry about editing and like, you know, all this other stuff. So I started doing these lives and literally I just get on my computer. Sometimes my phone, my phone camera, um, but it's better on my computer because it's the whole screen. And I get on there and I talk to people. And, you know, I have a little light or whatever, but, like, it's not like my lighting setup. I don't hook it up to my um, camera. Uh, I'd like to. I just can't figure out how to do that yet. I'd like to do it because sometimes they like to see me do my hair on camera. But the point of the thing is, is that I don't hook it up to my fancy DSLR camera. I'm literally on my webcam and people watch me. And people go back and watch that video again. Or, you know, watch it after the live. So... It's the quality of my content, it's what I'm talking about, it's my message, it's, you know, whenever I'm doing my hair, it's the content that they care about. As long as they can see it, as long as they can see it. So just because you don't prefer what you have going on, do not hold yourself back on because that's just procrastination. That's just a way to give yourself justification for you not doing another step 
me getting better at something. That's all it is. And I don't take any excuses from anybody. I will give you every reason why you should. And every reason why you can't before I let you make an excuse. So, with that being said, guys, I hope that you got something from this podcast today. And I hope you share it on all your social media. Help me out. Grow my channel as well. And I hope this information has helped you grow yours as well. Make sure you tag us. Make sure you come on our page and let us know how we've helped you. You know, give us some testimonials if you found value in our, our thing. Also, rate this on your iTunes or whatever platform you are listening to this podcast. Please go ahead and rate it. It, it just helps us grow here a little bit more. So make sure you guys ask any questions as well if you have any to what I just said. Or if you even have pointers, guys. If you have pointers, please let us know about your pointers because it will help us all grow. Maybe I'll learn something too. Okay, guys? So I want to thank you for tuning in and listening to Raising Bosses. This has been another solo episode. I hope you guys enjoy. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Raising Bosses podcast. I hope you enjoyed and please tell your friends and family. Go ahead and share this podcast on social media. If you or someone you know would like to be a part of this podcast, please email us at raisingbosses at gmail.com or you could DM us on all our social medias, our Raising Bosses on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you and goodbye.